Welcome everyone to this week's video. I hope you're all doing great. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Adam Gibbs and each week I attempt to put out a video that revolves around nature photography. Now I primarily uh, concentrate on composition and light with the odd review and post-processing video thrown in for good measure. So if nature photography is your passion, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now then, in this video, I'd like to talk about contrast or more specifically how I edit images with high contrast. As I had a few viewers ask if I could describe how I went about editing some of my recent photos from the California Redwoods. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link up in the corner here. But before I do that, I would just like to do a bit of house cleaning and make a few announcements. If you don't want to listen to the information, please fast forward to the meat and potatoes of this video. First up, I have several uh, workshops coming up that I'm sure some of you will be interested in. The first uh, workshop is Scotland's Isle of Harris and Lewis with photographers Dean Allen and Paul Thompson. The workshop takes place from November 18th to the 25th. We have four spots left. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below to Dean's website where you can find all the details. Next up, Spain with Alistair Ben. Alistair and I will be running two workshops in northern Spain in January 2024. The first workshop is from the 9th to the 18th, and the second trip will be from the 20th to the 29th. Uh, the group sizes are really small for each trip, and I believe we only have uh, two spots left in each. So again, I'll leave a link to the details below. Also in 2024, I have a few workshops planned or in the planning stages for Vancouver Island, including a couple of trips with Alistair Ben again. I also have a trip to Carmana, which is located on the west coast of Vancouver Island. This year's trip was so successful that if all goes well, I would love to run several trips to the area in 2024. So if you love old growth forests, go check out the details on my website. Next, my zine Antarctica. Uh, the zine is on sale for $14.99 US plus shipping. I need to get rid of the books to make room for a couple of new book projects that I'm working on that will hopefully be available at the end of this year and next year. So again, head on over to my website to order one of my zines if you would like one. Also, Quiet Light, my first book, and in its third printing, is still available at cozybooks.com. Again, I'll leave a link down below for the, uh, the details. Uh, if you'd like to receive updates on what's going on uh, or, or what's going on with workshops, head on over to my website and sign up for my newsletter. I send them out very, very rarely, uh, but uh, the information is usually quite useful. Okay, I'm almost finished. <laughs> I, I'm also excited to announce that I'm moving. So this means I'll finally be able to say goodbye to this tiny little room, which is a bedroom, spare bedroom. Uh, it's about 12 feet by 12 feet. Uh, I'm stuck in a corner here, surrounded by boxes. So hopefully next time I record, I'll be in my new studio. Uh, it will have a different look and I'll be able to swing one of my three cats around without uh, hitting anything. So that's really exciting. Uh, lastly, I'd really like to thank uh, all of you um, who continue to follow me, watch my videos and leave excellent comments. I don't always acknowledge those who leave comments or send emails, but please know that I read all of my correspondence and appreciate the support immensely. So thank you ever so much. Right, let's get back to uh, this week's video. Okay, I've opened up a, a selection of images from the California Redwoods. A couple of these images are from when I was there last year with Sean Bagshaw and Albert Dross, but I still use the same principles. Now, overall, when you have light fog like this, or in this case here, you have these extreme contrast ranges from the brightest areas, to the darkest areas, for most of my images, I always, always expose for the highlights. And what that means is that I'm not clipping my highlights or clipping very little of my highlights, but do, by doing that, you're going to be underexposing your shadows. And in some cases, the, the blacks are going to be clogged up. And that's not such a big deal with the full frame cameras that you have today or the medium format camera that I'm using. When it becomes an issue might be with the smaller sensors. 
Now, having said that, there's lots of software out now where you can get rid of noise uh, very, very easily. Even Lightroom has a really good denoise feature. So it's not a big deal anymore if you have noise in the shadows when you bring that exposure up. Now you'll notice that in this first image here, all of these were taken in the format that I intended, intended them to be. But you'll notice that in this case, the highlights are blown out. And if you look at the histogram up in the corner here, you can see that this is slightly overexposed. And the reason why I always expose for the highlights is that if you do overexpose your highlights, once they're gone, they're gone. You cannot bring back highlights. You cannot put detail into something that didn't have detail in the original uh, exposure. Whereas if you expose for the highlights and you do have any kind of detail in there, then at least it's going to maintain that. So let's just open this up as a full frame. So this is the original file here. And you'll notice that we've really overexposed the uh, the sky here. In those situations, it's not a deal breaker. It's not going to ruin the image. It just means that you're not going to bring, be able to bring back those details if there were any in those highlights. And in this case, there aren't any details anyway. So what I would do in this case is you'll notice that if I bring the exposure way down to that point there, then you'll notice that if I zoom in on the trees here, you can see details in the trees here, but the highlights are still blown out. What I like to do is rather than trying to get detail throughout the whole frame, which isn't always necessary, I'll actually purposely overexpose these areas in the background here. And the reason why I do that is it, to my eye, adds depth. So let's just zoom out again. And we're going to bring the exposure back to where it was. But now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the highlights and the whites. But I'm also going to bring up the exposure. And by doing that, what I'm doing is I'm almost fogging this area up. So it blends in more and it doesn't have that contrast. And I bring, I'll bring it up right on so that, so it's on the verge of being overexposed. Something like that. You'll notice that also in the shadows, we have, um, there are some areas that are clogged up. When I have little areas like this, I don't worry about it. But if, if there were a lot of shadows in there, say if I brought the blacks in to that degree there, then that's just too many clogged up shadows. So I'll, again, I'll bring them right up so that they're on the verge. And then it's a matter of adjusting the, the overall contrast, because what happens is as soon as you start to adjust the whites and the highlights and the blacks, say I, I decided to open up the shadows, then that flattens out the image and it doesn't look that great. So you need contrast in there as well. So let's add a little bit of contrast and we're going to bring this back down to how I shot it like this. And you'll notice there's a few areas where it is still overexposed. I'm not too bothered about those areas, to be honest, but we can bring those down if you like. So it's a matter of just keep adjusting the highlights, the whites and the blacks. And that's it. That's all I need to do. Uh, the color balance looks fine. I don't particularly like my images too yellow or too blue. So it's it's more or less it's it's what you like in your images, whether you like them slightly cooler or slightly warmer. And that's it. That's all I would all I would do with this image. This image here. Uh, again, we have a an extreme in highlights and blacks. And you can see that I've exposed for the highlights because the image is actually quite dark. Uh, the highlights, if you look up in the histogram here, right on this edge here, the only place where it's a little bit overexposed is right where the sun is. And it's virtually impossible to, to expose for the sun and still get details throughout the image. It's just, it's the contrast range is just too high for any camera. 
So I don't mind the little specular highlights here. Uh, again, let's have a look at the, the full image. Uh, I think the reason why I did it as a, as a pano is I wasn't really keen on this big patch of sky up here. But again, I would, I would treat this kind of the same as the last image. Bring up the exposure. You notice if I bring up the exposure, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really affect the, the highlights too much. And we can always bring those back down a little bit. Same with the whites. And in this case, I'm actually going to bring the blacks up. So we're, we're kind of adding a foggy effect in this. You can see that. So I'm flattening out the blacks. And in this case, I don't actually mind it so much. And I'm going to bring up the shadows ever so slightly as well. So let's go back to our original um, uh, crop, which was a shot here. And you can see that I've, I haven't done an awful lot. I have flattened it out a li little bit, but I do quite like that effect. I don't feel that I need tons of uh, contrast in, in here. Now this image here was extreme. Uh, this was more or less midday. And actually this was shot also as a pano, um, like that there. And as you can see, the shadows are extremely dark. Again, I exposed for the highlights. If you look up at the histogram, I probably could have given it a little bit more exposure, but I think in this case, it works so fine. It works fine. We can, we can bring back these shadows here as much as we want. What I really loved about this were the, uh, the light beams coming through. So again, I'm just gonna bring up the exposure. You'll notice on this side now, it looks beautiful, but this we've really kind of overexposed, but that's okay. We can bring that back. Again, bring the highlights down ever so slightly and start to bring those whites down again. Bring up the blacks. Let's just adjust this exposure just a little bit here so we can bring these, uh, uh, these light beams in. Now you'll notice that this is very bright. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use some local masks just to uh, bring out these areas a bit more and kind of maintain this. So I might even darken it a little bit. So I'm just going to grab uh, a mask here, grab the brush. I'm going to turn on the auto mask and I'm just going to paint this in here doesn't have to be anything fancy, like so. And for this one, I'm just going to bring the exposure down ever so slightly. Uh, I could also bring up a little bit of clarity. So those uh, beams are more defined. And bring up the, not the highlights, let's bring up the whites ever so slightly. There we go. Okay, now we're gonna go up to this mask. I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm going to uh, duplicate and invert the mask. So now we're on the other section of the image. And again, I'm gonna bring up the, the whites and the highlights. and also bring up the shadows ever so slightly. Something like that. And if we zoom in, uh, let's just go to 100% here. You'll notice that uh, this was taken at ISO 500. Now again, you know, this is a medium format camera. Uh, there is a little bit of noise in there, but it, it's minimal with this camera. And that's one of the reasons why I love shooting with the GFX 100 so much is that uh, it's just unprecedented when uh, it comes to noise control. Uh, there is a little bit of noise in there, but you gotta remember we're at 100% here. So if I made a print of this, uh, it would be no problem at all. And if I was a little bit worried about noise, 
then I could just use the denoise feature in Photoshop here. Uh, in actual fact, why don't we just do that just to see what it looks like. So denoise is fully AI now. Uh, it does a great job. Uh, we could just look at this really quickly. There's the noise there. And that's with the denoise feature. That's probably a little bit too much. So I'd bring that down maybe 40, 40 or so maybe. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, and Lightroom has made a, uh, a DNG file. And if we look at that new file, you can see that any noise that was in there before is pretty much totally disappeared. Not that it really bothered me that much anyway. So this is the new DNG file and this is the uh, original file. Okay, now this photograph here was one of my favorites um, from the trip. I just love the ethereal look of this photograph. Uh, but again, I'm gonna treat it like I did with the, the other images. Uh, so that means going up to the basic module again, just bringing up the exposure because I really like that bright look in my photographs, uh, bright shadows, not too much contrast, especially with uh, these foggy images. Uh, you'll notice that the highlights and the shadows are, are well within the realm of exposure. So it's a pretty good exposure. There's nothing overexposed or too underexposed. The only area that bugs me just a little bit is this very dark area here. Uh, so what we can do is we can just bring up the blacks ever so slightly. Uh, add a little bit of contrast. Now, in this case, I'd like to bring up the whites as much as possible. But before I do that, I'm going to crop this. I'm not keen on this blue sky up here. So I'm going to bring, um, bring that down ever so slightly to there. Around 16 by 9, I guess. and the, the whites, so pressing the Option Alt key here. That's pretty good right there, which is pretty much where I had it before. <laughs> and the blacks, um, if I bring the blacks down, this is gonna really clog up. So I think I'm just gonna leave the blacks for now. Uh, one last thing that I would like to do is add a bit more light in the center here. So we'll just grab the radial gradient and we'll just bring up those highlights ever so slightly and the whites. Like that. Okay, that's good enough. Um, color temperature. Let's have a look at the color temperature here. Uh, let's just get rid of the, the masks here. Warm it up ever so slightly. And last but not least, let's straighten up those trees a little bit. This tree here was actually leaning over, but these are definitely converging. So I'm just going to grab the vertical here and see what that does. And actually does a, a pretty darn good job constrain the crop and uh, and there we go that's pretty much it one thing I might do uh, is bring this in Photoshop and uh, use some luminosity masks just to bring up these shrubs ever so slightly so what I can do in Photoshop is pinpoint these areas here and just give them a little bit more uh, uh, definition well, thanks for watching uh, this week's video. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful and would like to see more of this type of content, be sure to let me know in the comments uh, below. Cheers, folks, and until next time, happy shooting.